And good evening and welcome to another episode of Live 605. I'm your host, Con Kazanzidis, a.k.a. Shave the Man. It's stuck with me now. Uh, some people have asked, why do you keep using the Shave the Man thing, seeing you're not just talking about shaving these days? And I don't know, I've I sort of adopted the name and it's stuck with me. But you don't have to be stuck with me or with that name. <laughs> welcome to... Another episode of Live 605 where we beam through the Wi-Fi and microwaves all that is good about the things that we love. That is our wonderful little hobby of shaving, good grooming and the like. Uh, a warm welcome to those of you that are watching through YouTube as we are now streaming live through YouTube, through Stray Whisker TV and also through uh, Shave the Man, the channel, the Shave the Man channel, which I decided to resuscitate. Um, in fact, it was more like exhuming the cadaver that was the Shave the Man channel. But alas, I'm back uh, in that capacity as well as here on Straight Whisker TV. Uh, a big cheerio, Steve Carter. Hi, uh, got Sarah watching again with me. Oh, that's lovely, uh, Stephen. And it was lovely to watch your live the other day. This is what grown men do sometimes. They watch other men shave in their bathrooms. It's, it's a thing. It's kind of weird, I know, but we all love uh, doing that. We pick up things. Look, it's never been about the shaving, just about the shaving. As we know, people talk about the things that are happening in their life through the, you know, through the course of the week or whatever it is, and they tell you about things. They might you know, have taken the pet to the vet or something like that, or you know, talking about how work at the moment is being a bit you know, so-so. So it's not about the shaving. It's about sharing in the community. Speaking of the community, I'm so grateful that um, this community is growing and that's a, that's a wonderful thing. I really appreciate that. I appreciate every single viewer. I know that time is a premium. Um, uh, good evening, Andrew. Yes, lovely to see you and everyone else. That's right. Um, thanks for joining the live. Uh, good evening. Yes, another um, – so Robert is, is watching us on um, Facebook. Look, at the risk of this becoming like a telethon – you know, um, a warm welcome to all of you. Um, I noticed that uh, I think uh, uh, Copenhagen, what? and it's 10 over. <laughs> good, excellent. Ah, Finn Nielsen, yes. A good friend of mine from uh, Facebook who's tuned in through um, YouTube. Excellent. Thank you very much. Nice of you to, to join us um, from Copenhagen. In fact, I mentioned Copenhagen this morning and that famous statue of the mermaid. If I'm not mistaken. Anyway, let us know. Uh, put new in the, below in the comments if you're new to this thing, to this live, because um, I'd like to know. I know quite a few of you, actually, um, in a virtual sense, of course, because we're based um, here in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales, Australia. And uh, it's been a wonderful, um, you know, ride. It's been a joy, in fact, meeting people both virtually and in the flesh, particularly when I visited the United States. Um, and hopefully when things uh, open up again, we'll be able to uh, travel and, and visit and, um, and, and have a meal or a drink uh, with our friends. But in the meantime, if you want a drink, hi, Mel who was that? Melinda. Oh, nice to see you, Melinda. Hello. Thanks for joining the live. Uh, but if you do want a drink, um, we've just put out a, a coffee on me. If you're in the Blue Mountains um, from Tuesday to Friday, Monday's a bit tricky, um, and you're an early riser or you're about, um, just book in a sesh and the coffee's on me, okay? We'll go and have it at the roaster up the road here. Um, and there's no um, uh, secret agenda, hidden uh, you know, secret handshake or anything like that. We're just going to chew the fat. In fact, it's interesting. Some people um, that, that visit um, already have this kind of um, um, interaction with yours truly. We talk about all sorts of things. It could be about... As I say, grooming, uh, we can talk about job interviews. Oh, why do want to talk about their work? But it's interesting. It's, a, it's quite an interesting thing. So we cover a whole array of topics. Um, and so, yes, if you're interested, it's on the, um, the Stray Whisker website. I'm going to put a link here. I've done it. I did it the previous post, but I'll put a link. It is $0. So if you're in the – I don't know that Copenhagen – friend Finn from Copenhagen would be able to come in, although I'd love to see that. Um, uh, yes, so, you know, you'll have a coffee, we'll have a bit of a chat for 30 minutes or so, and then I'll have the next coffee, and then by the time I've had the third coffee, because I've booked three sort of sessions, 9, 
9.30 to 10 and 10 till 10.30, where we solve all the problems of the world and beyond. And uh, yeah, just have a, have a chat. I think it's uh, I think it's very important. It's um, it's good because it because it it look it helps everyone. Okay, and uh, we've been through some some pretty tough times of late. Not as tough as previous generations. I appreciate that, but it's been pretty tough. The other thing I have uh, exhumed again, or reinstated, or put, brought back to life is uh, my blog, and I'm writing things on that, shavetheman.com.au. If you want to go and check that out, you can. I haven't put, I'm not going to put a visual up on that because then it becomes like a, tele, a telemarketing, television sort of commercial thing, and I don't want to do that. What I do want to do, though, is I want to ask you some questions about um, your purchasing habits and whether you, and in, in particular, I'm not talking about soaps or brushes or anything like that, but safety razors or razors. Um, you would have noticed if you tuned into the the title of this is that um, I own sixty seven razors, but really only use two. Uh, that may surprise people that are new to the hobby. It won't surprise people, I suspect, that have been in this hobby for a while, because what happens is we naturally. Um, tend to sort of gravitate or, or sort of lean more towards a particular razor that works for us. Once you've dialed in that that razor, there really is no reason to change things. The other variable, of course, is the you know the brush and the soap. But we're talking about razors here, um, and the uh, rad or what we call the razor acquisition disorder or dysfunction, or I don't know what you'd want to call it, disaster. Sometimes I guess. Um, Yes, those of you that have that watched these lives would know that, uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, whatever, I, I think that once you find the things that you like, you should probably stick to them. Um, it's fun acquiring razors. It's fun jumping on eBay and trying to, you know, haggle for, for, for products and, you know, get, jump on these auctions and things like that. And I, I, I get that the, the whole, uh, you know, your raison d'etre for having these these particular um, razors is the chase. In other words, trying to acquire a birth year razor or a vintage razor or whatever the case. Um, <laughs> Stephen, really? Might need to turn this off. Sarah might learn things that I've been hiding. Yeah. Um, Sarah, look, you realise Stephen's been here, don't you? We're not going to talk about that. All right. So, um, yes, uh, I, I basically... I have lots and lots of razors. I can't use them all. I, I try and, when I first purchased uh, these razors, uh, they went through, you know, went through a series of shaves with them and thought they were really, really good. And they still are really, really good. Um, but at some point, uh, utility takes over and usefulness. Um, and I just said, look, we could be playing this game all day, every day. Um, I'm just going to stick with what works for me. And I'm going to put a break on all of that sort of stuff. It's not something that is um, uh, critically or necessary. Many would argue that it is. And there are different people that um, uh, participate in this hobby. Yes, it is a hobby for those of you that are tuning in and don't really um, quite understand what the, all the, the fuss is about. It's the same with, you know, with rock climbers or, as I said, basket weavers or people that are into paper mache and all this sort of stuff or, you know, uh, pastry cooking or whatever. Sourdough, there you go, there's another one. So it's a thing, right? Um, what I would suggest, um, though, is that, I mean, I, I, you don't, there's a the real tendency to say, oh, look, you know, this person's, you know, he's got 8,000 raises and look at them, they're showing off or whatever and, you know, it's, it's a bit of a flex and all the rest of it. No, it's done for enjoyment, okay? Uh, there are, for example, there's the, uh, the Bentley Motor Vehicle Club and um, there are people that collect Bentleys. If they got the money, all strength to them, knock yourself out. But essentially, the utility of the Bentley is that it gets you from point A to point B, if that's what you want it for. David, I'm still on my first razor, brush and soap. This is made easier by all the other items I have found sick. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Mm. Well, excuse me while I have a cup of tea. I've had too much coffee today, so I'm not going to be drinking coffee. 
This is Blue Mountains Tea, by the way. Um, it's called Blue Mountains Tea. Look it up. I'm not going to advertise the company that does it because they wouldn't advertise me. Um, hey, Matt. How are you going? Um, yes. So there we go. 67 razors. I only use two. I'll show you what they are. Sometimes um, uh, that's okay. <laughs> you, you, we'll, we'll have to bring in a bring in a late note next time. But I know. Um, so. Sometimes these things interchange. So when I say two, uh, two that are readily available in the bathroom and haven't been put on a stand or away or packed away in a box or something like that. That's what I mean by two. The two's always out. As I said, I could rotate through these and all that. But what I'd find is that I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be getting the most out of that in terms of its use. So for me, why do I have them? I have them because I still enjoy the razor. If you, you know, it's like a collecting um, sort of... Um, scenario uh, and really as I say once you go down that rabbit hole I mean, look I have a confession uh, I uh, in an earlier stage of my life was uh, I'm at um, was uh, a great fan of uh, graphic novel I forget they were comics okay I was a I was a nutter for comics loved them absolutely loved them followed all the story arcs you know, I was a Marvel man and then I looked at the DC universe and did all that sort of stuff, loved it, and then, you know, bought the figurines and all that kind of stuff. And then, and then I sat down and said, this has got to stop. It's going to kill me. It's going to kill me. Buying near mint copies of things and certified comics. I mean, it went through the, down, the hop, down that rabbit hole. So it's a thing. It's a real thing, right? It's a real thing. Now, we have, we have a comment here from someone that's in... Oh, okay, Ben, yes. Four DEs, eight straights, eight brushes, one travel brush, eight soaps. That's if, and I do buy new, one must uh, go. But of, of, of becoming more difficult to cut one way. Yes. Been through a lot. Yeah. Look, I think that's kind of... That churn is quite normal where you sort of work through your razors and you think, look, I don't like that. This is okay, whatever. New, new razor comes out. Uh, an artisan usually will bring out a razor... A lot of people jump on it, um, and justifiably, a lot of them are really quite good. There's some hype around some other razors, uh, but the mass market ones, they're always there, right? No one's waiting waiting to buy a Mueller or, or an Edwin Jagger or a Merca. Um, the, the, the supply is, is fairly constant, and I suspect that's why they also say that if you're a beginner or a newbie, start here because it's readily available. Um, Parker, very inadjustable. See, look... Um, there could be we we could have thirty or forty people come up with their particular razor, the one that works for them, and that's fantastic. If you like it, I you know just stay with it, stay with it. Uh, I'm not going to say don't buy stuff, but I am. Right? You don't need to buy the next new Fandangle thing unless you are a collector, and unless it has some um, uh, sort of intrinsic value for you. Okay. Uh, we have a question here by one of our. Um, uh, yep, four to five razors in my regular rotation, and a few fringe dwellers. Yeah, that's that's about right. That's what happens. I mean, it just does. It, you sort of, um, you know, you dial in the ones you like, and the rest either have to go or you, you flip them on buy, sell, and trade, or the rest of it. Uh, Paul sent us a, a message here because he said he was running late. He'd be in the vehicle, his vehicle, driving home from work. Uh, Paul Phillips says, uh, I started with what you might call a standard razor, but then uh, on advice, I upgraded to a far superior razor for his needs, my needs, and unless it falls apart, I don't see the need to change in the foreseeable future. Is that normal? Or is changing and experimenting with different styles and grips weights the usual thing? Okay. Well, of course, you know what I'm going to say. Um, normal is a very subjective thing. What do you mean by normal? Um, it, it's it's it happens a lot that people find a razor that they like and they stay there. Uh, the presupposition, of course, is that if you don't, then you're abnormal or you're just not normal, and that brings up all sorts of other questions. But we know those. We know that uh, deep dark chasm that resides with you. You know who you are out there. You know who you are. And people, you know, acquiring all these things and hoarding them. So are you a hoarder? That's what I'd like to hear. Um, I'm hoping my latest purchase will be the one to end all further purchases. But <laughs> that's right. See, Matt, that's the thing, right? Um, once you get into this and you, you enjoy it, 
the void grows and you want to fill that void, and of course, being a void, you'll never fill it. Something else will come out. And this is, this is human endeavour, right? Um, it's, it's human endeavour. This is what happens. You want the, the latest and greatest, the new shiny thing. And I'm, not, and I'm not belittling or grudging anyone that. I think it's important. Um, variety is nice. All my roses cut differently, handles differently. I have six or seven, enjoy them all. Yeah. See, absolutely, absolutely. Look, I also use um, a straight razor, a cutthroat razor, but I have to admit that that's probably on a Sunday or now, I have to say, I'm, you know, I have to sort of admit even further that it's probably been about three, three months or so since I've used you know, a, a straight razor or the, the, the incorrectly called cutthroat. Uh, you've met me, right? Yes. <laughs> I've met you, Paul. Yes, yes, I have, I have. Um, so, uh, yeah, Paul, you're not normal. No, you are normal. You're, 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 you know, you're normal. Open comb standard, slant razors, all this sort of stuff. When you hear about these things, and usually they're on YouTube or whatever, people will talk about them. You want to get out there and see whether there is, it is as good as people say it is. And what happens invariably is that it's either on the money, um, a letdown, well, I don't, can't see what all the fuss is about. This thing was a dud for me. And this is where that all your mileage may vary comes into it, okay? It's different for everyone. Um, uh, but again, as I say, I mean, it's, it's your thing. It's your money. You can do and pursue as you will. But you know me and you know that I love a graphic. So let's look at a graphic on how a, a typical, I mean, we could plot this against sort of the bell curve. Now, the standard bell curve, you know, where it is everyone resides in the middle of the bell curve, more or less. Um, these are people that are probably in 62.5% of the population. And then on either side of that standard deviation, you have the rest of the people. But let's have a look at this because, as I say, I love a graphic. Let's have a look at the, the, the sort of early market. Now, when a new razor comes out, let's say, there are the enthusiasts that jump on this. Um, you know, they'll put themselves either on a, on a waiting list or they may have the maker send one out to them for review. Um, and then, uh, so this is the early adopters, right? Um, and then the early adopter of these enthusiasts um, will then become visionaries. They'll make a video, they'll talk to their friends, they'll jump on a forum, they'll tell other people about it. And it stays in that early adoption part of the market, right? Then there's this thing which, uh, you know, behavioural economists and psychologists like to call a chasm, and that is the leap that you have to make as a population to convince others or to have others be convinced by the fact that this is a really, really amazing razor that you're using, and they adopt it, right? Now, these people are pragmatists, and they belong in a larger sliver of the population that shaves, Again, remember, this can be used across um, all sorts of endeavours in life. And you have then the conservatives, the people that are stuck there, that, that will not move. They'll say, yep, this is it. I'm a pragmatist. I'm a conservative. This razor works for me. I'm going to wet shave. I'm going to use a Mueller or I'm going to use a Merker or I'm going to use an Edwin Jagger or whatever it is, or I'm going to use uh, you know, a, a carve razor or whatever the case may be, and that's me. And then right to the other side, you've got the sceptics and the laggards. These are the people that you meet at a barbecue that you must never mention you have more than one razor. No, don't tell them you have more than one razor because they will look at you and say, really? Why do you need two? Right? There's no point uh, trying to resist that kind of thing. It's, it's futile. Resistance is futile. So don't really even go there. But let me tell you, it's, it's a portion of the population. A lot of people are in that sceptic's laggard um, part of the curve, right? They, they are there. They exist. So I just want you to think about where you sit in this curve. I, can, I, I have a sneaking suspicion I know where some of you, you would sit. Um, uh, and, of course, this early market, early adopter, I'm onto this razor, I love it or whatever, um, this become, these people tend to be hobbyists. They're pe tend people that tend to have a conversation and have embraced the whole nomenclature and language around that particular, uh, you know, razor or whatever it is, and they, they are in that group. Some other interesting things are happening. Namely, I'm going to have a swig of my tea. 
excuse me, um, the curve, the bell curve is starting to melt a little bit. We've noticed if you do some market research, you'll find that there are a few more enthusiasts around than there were. There are a few more visionaries around than there were. And the the 62.5 roughly percent of pragmatists and conservatives are sort of starting to sort of melt a little bit and, and it's not as it's not peaking as much. Where do you belong? Just wondering, where do you belong? Have you thought about this? Is it something that I mean I know you I know you're probably not in the bathroom or in the shower thinking, oh I wonder where I sit on the bell curve. But it's it's an interesting it's an interesting point, even for um Sarah Carter. Yes, I hope you're still with us. Um, I mean, I'd be very angry if I were you. Very, very, very angry. Very, 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 very angry if I were you with what's going on there at the Carter household. Um, yes, let me know. I'd love to hear your comments. There are some comments that are coming through. From It's also just great fun. It's not the search for the grail. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It is great fun. Um, and acquiring or finding something is great fun. And uh, as I say, this happens across human, all sort of human endeavours. doesn't matter where, you know, what sort of, um, you know, hobby or whatever it is that you... The only thing is here, there is a practical, useful consideration, namely you're shaving your face. How does that become a hobby? It's a necessity for some people because they work or they can leave a beard if they like. And some of them are rocking an amazing beard, I must say, of late. Um, Pranav, you belong to enthusiasts. Look, I... I suspected as much, <laughs> I thought as much, because you're very enthusiastic. I can see that, and, and I really appreciate and thank you for, um, uh, to, uh, for, your, for your joining us. Stephen, mate, mate. See, look, okay, so for the non australian so this, okay, so let's look at this comment. It says mate. It starts with mate, all right? Now, this could be read any number of ways. Of course, you know, when, when you're only reading something, the sort of nuance and the tone may be lost. But let's just let's just assume Stephen's talking to me as a Queenslander would to a, a New South Welshman. Mate, mate, she's telling me I need to thin the herd a bit. I knew I, <laughs> I should have flogged off. Look, um, Stephen, you can tell her that you could be into other things, like there's other things you could be into, expensive things. And that things that don't make you smell as nice as you do, you know, you're looking after yourself. And if you're looking after yourself, I'm sure that Sarah would be um, more than happy for that. Um, uh, I'm right in not uh, talking to anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm right in the not talking to anyone. Yes, you're you. I, I would say that Paul, you probably sit bank smack in the centre of the ball curve, and that's where probably most people do. As I say. Jumping onto the new, ra okay. So to be fair, when a new, when a razor comes out and it's and it's manufactured by a particularly an artisan manufacturer, they will, and it's understandable, push out that razor to people that they think will have an informed opinion about it. And of course, let's let's not mince our words here. Um, people of influence, okay. There are some influential people that if you put a razor in their hand and said, "Listen, you shave with this," and you know, they will give you their honest opinion. I'm not for one minute suggesting that they're on the take or something like that, but. Uh, the, the manufacturer is well aware of the words and how much currency those words hold. Now, it better be a good razor because if it's not, uh, you'll get, um, you will be punished, I think, if it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Brendan, lovely to see you, my friend. I'm, I, I hope uh, you and the family are doing well. Uh, it's always nice to, to hear from Brendan. I haven't heard from you for a while. I hope that uh, you're, you're doing well. Uh, Stephen, start collecting watches. Wife will have you back to raise as quick. <laughs> That's right, Stephen. Or start doing up cars. Huh? Yeah. Or get into bourbon, like someone who I won't mention. That's definitely on this live. Um, oh, look, uh, I have so many safety razors and use only about one to three regularly. Yes. Yeah. Look, I hear you. I'm going to show you what I use. Uh, and as I say, so basically my, so the bathroom is set up in such a way that, you know, I need to reach for a razor. It's going to be the one that I use mostly, right? I don't go fossicking for razors and saying, oh, look, hang on, where did I put that Had it in a box here, whatever. I think about what I'm going to shave with. I say, okay, well, I'm shaving tomorrow. This is what I'm going to use. And it's there. 
right? Now, sometimes, sometimes something comes in and I think, oh, I haven't used that above the tie for a while or I haven't used that, um, the, uh, the Merca slant. I might use it. But what will happen is that is a one, one-off thing in the scheme of things and then I just put it away again. Not that I don't like it. I just want to be able to consistently get the shave that I like. And all of that and acquiring those razors was a lot of fun. But for me, you know, two, three, it's, it's kind of elastic, is what I will reach for. Now, what I own and what I've got in a, sh in a showcase and all the rest of it, it's like the comic book uh, fad and, the, you know, the, the thing that I went through. Not that I'm saying this is a fad. It is a bit of a fad. But um, it's, it's one of those things. Right. Okay. So um, I kind of uh, started with... I know this is going to be boring. I know, I know, I know it, I know it. The M Merca 34C. Now, why did I do that? Because it was available. It was there, right? Started with that, used it, and it's like a, it's like an old friend, right? Um, I like the fact that it's it's quite small. It's it's easy to use when I'm shaving my head as well. Um, I have to say though. I think the Merkers have gone through uh, some QA issues that I think are being... Um, uh, hi, Damien. Yes, I'll go to them. That's right. Well, see. Um, they've gone through, th through some issues uh, just on finish. Um, and uh, so not no two 34Cs are the same pre... So if you bought a Merca 34C before sort of 2014, it's a kind of different one to the one that was floating around from 15 to, to 18. Um, yes, many have started the same way. That's absolutely right. Um, so if I'm not using the Merca and travelling, I just like putting that in a, just in a little dot bag and I'm out the door. There's no, there's no issue there at all. It's 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 pretty it's 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 a standard sort of razor, and the other thing is, look, I've got to say, if I lose my Merca, I'm not going to lose sleep. Okay, there I said it. Started with a Merca 34C and still use it a fair bit. Yeah, it just works. I, look, I know it's not sexy. I know it's not the, the 2.3 and the 0.8, and I mean, which are great. Don't get me wrong. I know people try and read into these things and. Oh look, you know he's dissing on that. No, I'm not. I'm not. Um, it's it's they're great, but I just want to pick up a razor and use it. I'm of a certain age. Okay, that's all I have to say. Um, the other one that I use, uh, I needed to have an opinion on it. Hey, the Scottish Australian. Hello, 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 hello. Um, so, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do, in, I do indeed, and I and I rarely use them. I rarely use them. But, um, in fact, I've got some in a showcase here. Look, uh, the other one that I use, because I need to have an opinion on it, because people are going to ask about it and all the rest of it, and as I say, I needed to have an opinion on it, is this guy here. It's the 316. It's not... It's not the knurled, um, let's get back into focus here. Come on. It's not focusing. Right. See what happens? You bring a 316 into the into the picture. And it, um, it's not the knurled one. It's the uh, anodized aluminium one. See, I went through this phase where I wanted everything to be heavy and hefty and this and that, you know, like I was um, barbecues eight days a week. Oh, I'm a man, you know, I'm going to. It's a tool. I'm going to be able to hammer nails in the wall with it. Relax, okay? Calm down is what I said to myself. Um, so now I like something that's light, agile. This works. It is slightly more efficient, aggressive than your regular Edwin Jaggers. And these this works for me more than they do. Okay, so they're the two I use, but I said that I interchange sometimes. Look, I'm going to say something. And this will, will get me thrown off the air. I'll probably have to throw myself off the air. Sometimes, sometimes I use a cartridge razor. 
okay? I know. Look, I'll get out of focus again. I probably should get out of focus now. This I use um, when I travel. Uh, when I'm, and when I say travel, I might go away for two or three days or something like that. And, if I, and I don't want to shave while I'm going there. I need to shave when I'm there. And it's not the face. I only do the head very quickly because what happens is that when I'm away, if I've, I've got a meeting or if I'm you know, at a wedding or something like that or going to see people, without fail, and after an enormous amount, and, very, and I'm in the moment, right? I'm saying, no, this is going to be a great show. It's going to be a great show. I always cut myself. I nick myself. Um, is it a different environment? Am I in a different bathroom? Um, have I not prepared enough? Is the, you know, is that I've got sort of fairly soft water, so I get an amazing lather, right? Um, what, yes, it is a sin. I, I agree. I confess. It's a sin. Um, but I feel less sinful about it, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so I just find that I'll get these little, I'll get these little weepers on the side of my noggin or behind my thing, and then I've got to wear a nice shirt, and, and, and it's this blood there. It just annoys me, right? I know that you can cut yourself with these cartridge razors too, but for me, it's and really, I'm talking about my head. I don't, I don't like and will not shave my face with a cartridge razor. Haven't done so for years and years and years and years and years and years. Um, Finn, a bit on both sides, but less eager to try new things, more looking for the one and only-ish. Tried a lot, hip and new, without being impressed. See, this is what happens, Finn. Yes, I agree. Look, I, I, I hear you. Uh, people try razors because uh, why wouldn't you? There's excitement around the razor. It's new. It looks beautiful. It's been photographed well. There's a, there's a whole, you know, bit of excitement. But this is the test. When you go to that imaginary wedding or the barbecue or whatever and you talk to people, they don't care where you I tell you what, nobody cares. They don't care. I've made people want to care about what I shave with, and they go, get a life. You need to acquire a life very soon. GST included. Get a life with GST included. Because you know. So I realise no one cares. They don't no one cares. No one cares. They don't care. But I care about Pranav. So even, you don't need to call me sir. Even I use cartridge razors sometimes and it reminds me again why I should prefer saying. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Look, that's the thing about it. Pranav, by the looks of things, by the look of your avatar picture there, you've got a full head of hair so you don't have to shave your head. Um, and so that's kind of understandable. Look, that's the only time I use it. Um, there is a question. I know people are going to ask this because they've asked all the time. What do you think of... Uh, the Broman razor, it's mild, okay? And you're not going to cut yourself with it. And I've used it a few times now because I need to, as I say, I need to have an opinion on it, I need to be able to talk to people about it. And also because very soon, I don't think these will be available anywhere in the world. They're not available. Look, we're the only ones that have them in the world through fate or misfortune or whatever you want to call it. And I'll take that. Happy to take that because we're in Australia, we didn't get them until there was a stuff up, whatever. Anyway, we've got, so we've got a lot of them, but we've moved a lot of them. People like them, and the ladies like them, uh, and gentlemen that want to, uh, that are in a bit, of a, a bit of a rush would use it. I've used this on my head. The face and that, I was a little bit underwhelmed. I, that's the truth for me. But if you're doing certain bits, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Time for more tea. If you're doing certain bits and pieces, if you're doing some landscaping, if you're doing your legs, if you're doing your, your pits, I'll stop there. Uh, because I had to indicate that this video is not for children. It's, you know, it's not made for children, so I'll stick with that. Um, it's just one of those things. You know, it is. I haven't cut myself since I switched from cartridges to safety razors. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. And and I and again, it's about being you know when you're rushing. I think it's and being in a different environment. I have a bashed up uh, file and three quarter span of ground into a razor to each their own. Yes, you do, David. You do. You do. You. I think I've seen it too. Um, look, I, I guess the the moral of the story is you can have eight thousand razors, you can have thirty two Bentleys, you can have all these sort of things, but you're only going to ever be able to sit in one at any one time or use one at any one time. There's nothing wrong with a hobby. In fact, I began as a hobbyist 
but after a certain while, I just felt that I needed to do, you know, because I've got to get dressed to come to work, do all that sort of stuff like most of us do. Um, and so for me, there was a practical consideration. Um, so that's it. Uh, they're the two razors that I use with the odd one, and this is the, the, the proviso, when I travel and I need to shave... I'm not going to cut my head with a cartridge razor when I am out of my bathroom in, in another environment. Those of you who are sales reps or people that travel and that have a bald head will know what I'm talking about. It's, I don't know what it is. When you're, in your, when you're not at home, like even you say, no, I'm going to prep, I'm going to use a towel, I'm going to do everything right. And you've got this little red dot there and you think, bugger, why did I rush? But you didn't rush. You didn't rush. It's just, it's something. It's one of the variables, one of the mysteries of life. I, um, I really appreciate. Oh, we got a lot of comments coming through here, and I'm really, um, uh, I, as I say, I really appreciate your uh, input, and I appreciate people. You'll always have your favourites, absolutely, and you'll never walk alone in having your favourites. So reference to someone that's watching tonight. Hello, uh, old farm show. Nice to um, to see you, whoever you may be. Um, it's a, it's an honour and a pleasure that you've joined us. So that's it, really. Um, nothing wrong with collecting razors. I've done it myself. Um, and there's also nothing wrong with saying, you know what, I've sold all my razors and now I just use these two or three um, or I use this one when I travel because if I lost it, I would, it wouldn't be the end of the world for me. And that's that. That's really um, as far as, uh, um, you know, as far as things go. Um, with, have we got any other questions here? Tried using a leaf razor for the head? No, but that's the only place I would use it. It's quite a, it's quite a, quite a footprint, even though I don't, I've got a moustache, I don't really need it. But to me, it's quite finicky. Very good razor, I hear. Um, but, uh, I mean, think about this razor, uh, the, the, the sort of, um, uh, you know, the mildness aside, the design is a beautiful wishbone. It's very minimalist. It's, it, it's heavy in the hand and all the rest of it. The fact that you have to take out one, put in a razor blade, another one, and all that sort of stuff, to me, would feel like I'm peeling potato. It's like a potato peeler. Sorry, I said it. There it is. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's great. And I know a lot of people have actually asked, you're going to get the leaf razor and all the rest of it. Uh, again, I would rather just shave with a with a safety razor. Um, and if not a safety razor, a cartridge. And now because of the cartridges, I was going to say, they're recycled completely. So they're not, they don't just end up in landfill. Gillette will pull them apart and recycle the whole thing. And that's that. Anyway, I think that's probably time to go. Um, Thank you to all that have that have tuned in. I, I really appreciate it. I think we've got a little overtime. Um, uh, what have we got? That's another great show. Con, I can sort of see. I'm reading comments on the monitor. Another great show. Good job. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wish we could have had a coffee. You're based in Victoria, I know. Asked is the Broman a cart or does it use DE blades? It uses DE blades. All right. It uses little half blades that sit in there. So you put a little half blade in there. And it's done. It's it's a great razor. You're not going to cut yourself with that. It's problem is you don't shave with this the way you would with a safety razor because this thing you can just keep going over the same spot and you're not going to get any irritation. You go over the same spot with a safety razor, you're asking for trouble. Okay, um, so it's a great newbies razor and it's a great razor for ladies. And we keep selling them into sold them into Canada and Thailand and the United States. People are buying them all over the place. Europe, not so much because of brutal issues with Europe. You know, they've got taxes and all sorts of things. So um, in India, we've got one of the uh, cartridge razors which consists of a single blade only, unlike others. And in case of travelling, I prefer that razor. Please review that razor. Gillette Guard. Ah, yes. Now the Gillette Guard. The thing is with that, uh, Pranav, is that it's um, all plastic. That's the thing. We're not really... We want to get away from the plastic thing. Okay, that's it. It's just one of those things. Um... Love how you tied all this info together this evening. Yes, that's why I wore a tie. Insert laughter here. Okay, just laugh now. If
this was canned laughter. If I had a button for laughter, I'd press it right now. Breathe. Thank you, Stathi. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I, I really, 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 really appreciate it. We'll see you again in the next live. If you've got any questions or anything you'd like me to cover, except for the Gillette Guard, I don't know that we have them here, but I'm sure we do somewhere. If I went possibly for one, but I wouldn't do it to myself or to you. Um, leave any questions below and I'll try and get to them. Uh, yes, it's been an absolute pleasure again, folks. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.